paramedic beat up by the man he is trying to save. So there I was, a night shift paramedic, cruising through the city lights, responding to what was supposed to be a routine call. A guy, completely wasted, had taken a nasty fall outside a bar and needed a ride to the ER. Simple, right? Wrong. We get there, and this dude is plastered but conscious. He's all laughs and slurred words as we help him onto the stretcher. The ride starts smooth, and I'm in the back with him, checking vitals, doing my thing. Out of nowhere, this guy flips a switch. One second he's mumbling about his ex, the next, he's a whirlwind of fist and fury. Now, I'm not a small guy, but trying to dodge punches in the cramped quarters of an ambulance? Not exactly my idea of a good time. This guy though, he's determined to make my shift memorable. He lands one right on my jaw, and for a moment, it's lights out for me. I'm thinking, great, this is how I go out, taken down by a drunk dude in the back of my own ambulance. But adrenaline's a funny thing. It kicks in, and with a bit of struggle, I manage to restrain him, thanks to some hastily remembered self-defense training and a healthy dose of desperation. The rest of the ride is a blur of radio calls for police backup, restraining the guy to the gurney and trying to keep my cool. We arrive at the ER, and it's like stepping into the ring of a wrestling match, with nurses and security jumping in to help. In the end, the guy was handed off to the cops, and I was left with a bruised jaw and one heck of a story. So, to all my fellow night shift warriors out there, stay safe, and remember, it's all fun and games until someone tries to turn the ambulance into a UFC octagon. Edit 1. Continuing from that whirlwind of a night, things took an unexpected nosedive when I decided to take legal action against my assailant. Fueled by a sense of injustice and the encouragement of my peers, I filed a lawsuit, hoping for some semblance of accountability and perhaps a deterrent against future attacks on first responders. Little did I know, the road ahead was paved with more than just good intentions. The courtroom became my new battleground, a stark contrast to the adrenaline-fueled streets in the back of an ambulance. There, arguments weren't about life or death but about legal technicalities and interpretations of the law. My confidence wavered as the proceedings dragged on, each session chipping away at my resolve. Then came the verdict. We lost. Not because the jury sympathized with a drunken assailant but on a frustrating technicality. It turned out that in the heat of the moment, in the chaos of the assault, some protocol had been overlooked. This oversight, seemingly minor in the context of self-defense, was enough to tilt the scales against us. The fallout was immediate and devastating. Not only was I denied justice, but the legal fees and the cost of the lawsuit plunged me into financial turmoil. I found myself drowning in debt, a stark contrast to the stability I once took for granted. The irony wasn't lost on me. In trying to stand up for my rights, I'd fallen into a pit of financial despair. Life took on a grim hue. The job I once performed with pride became a reminder of the night that changed everything. My savings, intended for a future filled with promise and possibility, were now allocated to endless bills and looming debts. The stress was relentless, a constant pressure that weighed heavily on my shoulders and darkened my once optimistic outlook. But, amidst this storm of despair, there's a glimmer of resilience that refuses to be extinguished. I've had to make peace with the outcome, accepting that some battles, no matter how just, don't always end in victory. I've leaned heavily on the support of friends and family, whose unwavering belief in me has been a lifeline in my darkest moments. Now, as I work tirelessly to rebuild what was lost, I find strength in the lessons learned from this ordeal. Life's unpredictability can sometimes be cruel, but it also teaches us about the power of perseverance. I've become more cautious, yes but also more compassionate towards those facing their battles, legal or otherwise. Though my bank account tells a story of loss, my spirit narrates one of survival. The journey back from the brink has been slow and fraught with challenges, but it's also been a testament to the human capacity for resilience. The lawsuit may have left me financially broke, but it hasn't broken my spirit. As for my future, it remains unwritten. I've learned to find solace in the small victories, cherishing the moments of peace amidst the chaos. The road to recovery is long and uncertain, but I'm committed to walking it, one step at a time, bolstered by the hope that someday, I'll emerge not just intact but stronger for having faced the storm head on. Edit 2. Alright folks, plot twist time. After the courtroom debacle left me financially and emotionally drained, I realized I couldn't let that be the end of my story. So, I did what any reasonable person on a redemption arc would do. I started looking for a new beginning. Landing a new job was the first step on my road to recovery. It wasn't easy, the market was tough, and my confidence had taken a serious hit. 
but, as luck would have it, I stumbled upon an opportunity in a completely different field. Healthcare tech. Yeah, from saving lives in the back of an ambulance to troubleshooting software that helps save lives in a less direct, but equally important way. The irony wasn't lost on me. With this new gig, things started looking up. The pay was decent, the work was fulfilling, and it came with the added bonus of no risk of being punched in the face. Slowly but surely, I began chipping away at the mountain of debt that had accumulated. It felt like a Sisyphean task at times, but with each paycheck, the boulder got a little lighter. Now, here's the part where the clouds part, and the sun shines through. Amidst all this turmoil and transition, I reconnected with an old friend, Jess. She'd been through her share of life's ups and downs, so she understood the struggle. What started as a rekindling of friendship quickly blossomed into something more. She was my rock, offering support and understanding that was nothing short of miraculous. Jess and I, we didn't need a big wedding. Our love was something we celebrated every day, not just on some lavish occasion. So, we tied the knot in a small ceremony surrounded by close friends and family. It was perfect, a testament to the fact that happiness doesn't require perfection, just the right person by your side. So there you have it, my roller coaster journey from the depths of despair to finding love and a fresh start. I paid off my legal debts thanks to the new job and found a partner who's as badass as she is supportive. To anyone out there facing their dark night of the soul, remember, the comeback is always stronger than the setback. You might find yourself taking punches, hopefully metaphorically, in one chapter, only to turn the page to something unexpectedly wonderful. Keep pushing forward, the next chapter might just be your best one yet. And hey, if a former paramedic turned tech guy can do it, so can you. Stay safe, and keep fighting the good fight.